Today's Amanita series. We have an early arrival just before the summer solstice. Uh, this is a Amanita in section Amanita we call gemmatoids. So this species here, we recognize the, the small size of her. And also this brownish yellow cap, I would call straw colored. And do note, the vellum that's left on the top, this UV material, flakes off. It's not stuck and adhered to the cap. You can see it almost peeling off. I bet my finger can even finish the job as it peels away. No, it can be lost easily in the rain and the sun, not sticking to the cap. With all Amanita, what we do want to do is we do want to dig up the base. The base holds a lot of clues, particularly for this section, section Amanita. And as we dig it up, we can see somebody's having breakfast. But another thing is this base. So note how it's very, well, rather bulbous on the base. which is wider than the stem. But know how the, the vellum peels away. We also have this flaked material on the top of the bulb as well. This is where it broke away from the cap. And it has that same design and texture, characteristic to the gem gematoids we have here in the Northeast. One characteristic I do want to note on this, we'll get into with a larger specimen, um, is the margin that it develops on this. Now this one's very young, so we can't see it, but we can see this yellow color, um, which would point us directly to section Amanita. And you may struggle with panther caps, um, which is a subsection pantherina, which can take this appearance vaguely. And we also have the gematoids, which can take this appearance vaguely. One thing I do here in the Northeast is I look to look for clues. And this is a clue right here. Uh, my oak trees that I have here. This is Quercus rubra. I have two right here. And this one right here, I believe, is hosting on the roots these gematoid amanitas. So going back to the small size, we have a few others here in the grass. And let's go to this larger one. Now in age, characteristics change, and it's good to compile what we see when we're young, what we see when we're old, and also in advanced stages of maturity also holds clues with many Amanita. Now this one is a bit larger, and we can see this little bit of material still stuck on the cap, and it's vaguely peeling up, but do note this striate margin. This striate margin is characteristic to subgenus Amanita, our Caesars, our Grisettes, and um, members of section Vaginata, and also our members of section Amanita uh, have this striate margin, which is very characteristic to that subgenus compared to other subgenus, um, which may or not be a typical characteristic. One thing I really like to note on this, which is unique, um, is this margin. It reminds me of a bottle cap. The way it's just little tiny triangles peel away as the cap expands away from the stem. I see this on Amanita species N08 um, in the Russuloids group. So we'll label this Amanita Russuloids, but it's a name being used for multiple species. Uh, and this is one characteristic that I find on this one in particular here in the Northeast. So we have this striate margin we have the peeling vellum on the cap, and we have this distinct bottle cap, uh, little remnants, this appendiculate uh, margin that it has here on the cap. Now, we'll dig this one up as well. Pop, pop, pop. So continuing some ID characteristics on this, we can note that it's ex it doesn't have a skirt. This is very typical for our gematoids that we have in the Northeast. There are other members in the Russuloid clade, which I have seen skirts on 
It's not common, but it's also not impossible either. This here, when we look at the design of the gills, very characteristic to Section Amanita. They cut off, these short gills tend to stop at various lengths. Let's see if I can find a tall one, which I'm having struggles to find, but we can focus on these bottom ones down here. So since we have the long gills, up oh, there's a short run up there. We have the long gills, which go pretty much from the margin to the stem, and then there's dispersed lengths of these short gills. In section Amanita, we call this truncate. They're squared off, they stop and go straight at a 90 degree angle um, towards the flesh of the cap. This is very characteristic for section Amanita. Um, so always worth noting these short gills with any Amanita that you take. The design of the stem material here, not necessarily a useful characteristic uh, for identifying this to species uh, or its coded number, um, but it's always worth noticing the cap and this you can particularly see that there was no annulus present. And we do have this globose booted base with that material just kind of making a little sack-like pouch on the bottom. So as a gematoid, uh, we call this Amanita russuloides here in the Northeast. Hardwood lover, uh, which helps me distinguish away from finicky looking uh, section, subsection pantherine caps. Worth noting that this one does contain isozoxal derivatives. Those are neurotoxins, uh, most commonly known in Amanita muscaria. This is in the same section. Uh, multiple members in that section um, contain this. Not all of them, but worth noting that this is a toxic mushroom, so eat at your own risk. It's not deadly. Uh, and that's it. We'll do uh, Amanita species NO8, or Amanita russuloides as we're going to label it, here in Rhode Island, right before the summer solstice. I hope you enjoyed.